morning ladies and gentlemen birthday warrior here hope you guys are having a super awesome day and if you look at the topic today is the response the father's responsibility the father's responsibility trying to get my lighting okay right right the father's responsibility so let's go ahead and bow our heads for prayer. They're kind of gracious and the Father I ask you to be with us as we study the Father's responsibility. Be with us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So let us go ahead and start studying the Father's responsibility. But of course, the first of all, I have to ask you what time it is, my sister, my brother. It's time for God's people to start studying this book, start studying the Bible. Start studying the Bible, not only studying, but we need to follow the Lamb, the Lamb, the person of the Bible, okay? We need to start doing that. With the serious time that we're living in, it's a very serious time, serious time indeed for God's people, or for the world, I should say, in general. So if we look at the topic today, this was going to be, I need to change it on Facebook again. This is going to be a three parts, father's responsibility. It's going to be three parts. We're still dealing with the chapter of home influence, uh, but this one here is the father's responsibility. And it goes this way. It says, the husband and the father is the head of the household. The wife looks to him for love, sympathy, and for aid in the training of the children. And this is right. The children are his as well and hers, and he is equally interested in their welfare. The children look to their father for support and guidance. He need to have a right conceptions of life and the influence and the and association that should surround his family. Above all, he should be controlled by the love and the fear of God and by, and by the teaching of his word that he may guide the feet of his children in the right way. Hey, Adam. Thank you for stopping by, my friend. You know what? I forgot the scripture. So my scripture was going to be Psalms 103 verse 13 so let me go there it says like the father like as the father ha uh, pitied his children so the father pitied them that fear him and we can also take out pity and says like the father has compassion on his children so the lord has compassion on them that fears him and that's psalms 103 13 okay Okay, so that's the scripture. So let me go on to state. It says, the father is the lawmaker of the household. What is he? The father is the lawmaker of the household. Not only is he the lawmaker, though, but the father is the priest of the home. The priest of the home. It says, the father is the lawmaker of the household. And like Abraham, he should make the law of God the rule of his house. God said to Abraham, I know him that he will command his children and his household. That's if you look at Genesis 18, 19. There would be no sinful neglect to restrain evil, no weak, unwise, indulgent favoritism, no healing of his conviction to do of duty to the claim of mistaken affection. Abraham would not only give right instructions, but he would maintain the authority of just and the righteous laws. God has given rules for our guidance. Children should not be left to wander away from the safe path marked out in God's word into ways leading to danger which are open on every side. Kindly, but firmly, with persevering and prayerful effort, their wrong desire should be restrained, their inclination denied. The father should enforce in his family the stern virtue, energy, integrity, honesty, patience, courage, diligent and practical usefulness 
and what he requires of his children, he himself should practice illustrating these virtue in his own manly bearing. Let me repeat that. And what he requires, the father requires of his children, he himself should practice and illustrate in these virtues in his own manly bearing. But the father, but the fathers, do not discourage your children. Combine affection with authority, kindness and sympathy with firm restraint. Give some of your leisure hours to your children. Become acquainted with them. Associate with them in their works and in their sports and win their confidence. Cultivate friendship with them, especially with your son. Let me repeat that. Cultivate friendship with them, especially with your sons. In this way, you will be a strong influence for good. The last paragraph. The father should do his part towards making home happy. Let me repeat that. The father should do his part towards making home happy. Whatever his cares and business perplexities, they should be, they should not be permitted to overshadow his family. He should enter his home with smiles and pleasant words. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. I'm telling you, there's so much stuff going on with the family, and I, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the, the fathers. I mean, uh, you guys, we need you, fathers. We really need you. We really need you. Thank you for, for, for being there for us, being there for the children, being there for the wife or your significant others. Thank you for being there. Sometimes men doesn't get the credit that they deserve. A father doesn't get the credit that they deserve. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank you. And it's, it's amazing how God allowed me to uh, to pick this particular lesson, the home influence. I didn't even know that what, there was a title in there, a father's responsibility. And especially as we're going into the Father's Day weekend, my brother, my sister, hey, uh, I got my cat and my dog, they're playing. Go, you guys, go away. They're shaking my camera, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, they're playing. It's in love, they're kissing on each other. Oh, so sweet. That's how we're supposed to be within the family, right? So I just want to thank you, fathers, for just being there. Thank you, um, husbands, for being there. Just thank you, man in general. Thank you for being there for your children. I know sometimes we give you guys a hard time. I know women gives you guys a hard time. And even if you are maybe a father that might not have the weekend with your kids this weekend, you know, just pray for your children, wherever they are. Because I know there's a lot of homes that's broken and uh, the kids go from one parent to the other parents and back and forth. And, but then you still need to have the rules within your own home for your children. So wherever your children be this weekend, just continue to pray for them and pray for yourself that you will surrender your heart to God, okay? So this was part one. Uh, Monday we'll pick up on part two. And let me go ahead and read this uh, other part for you. This is the same a woman that wrote this book, Remember Step to Christ, and the one that we're covering right now, the Ministry of Healing, and then the woman that wrote this book as well, The Gay Controversy, she also wrote this book here, The Adventist Home. And within this book, it says, Father's Position and Responsibility. It's a true, defin true definition of a husband. The home is an institution of God. What did I say? The home is an institution of God. God designed that the family circle, father, mother, and children, should exist in this world as a firm. The work of making home happy does not rest upon the mother alone. Father have an important part to act. The husband is the house band. What did I say? The husband is the house band of the home treasure, binding by his strong, earnest, devoted affection, the members of the household, mother and children, together in this is together in the strongest bond of union. His name, house band, is the true definition of a husband. 
I saw that but few fathers realize their responsibility. Okay, so fathers, you have a great responsibility. And I just thank you for, for being there. Just thank you for being there. And it says, submit the will to God. This is for the father. To the man who is the husband and a father, I would say, be sure be sure that a pure, holy atmosphere surrounds your soul. What did I say? Be sure that a pure, holy atmosphere surrounds your soul. You are to learn daily of Christ. Never, never are you to show a tyrannical spirit in the home. Or we could say uh, a harsh, a person that is cruel. We're not supposed to have that in the home. Why? The man who does this is working in partnership with satanic agency, okay? So if you are harsh and things coming out of your mouth and you're throwing stuff around, that is not the spirit in the home, my brother, my, my brother. It says, bring all, bring, I'm sorry, bring your will into submission to the will of God. Bring your will into the submission of the will of God. God wants us fathers to be, to go to him daily, to lean on Christ daily, to get our examples and to live the life of a true believers by being that within the home. Yes, like a state, we fall, we all fall down, but we need to go to those individuals that we have offended and ask and, 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 and confess our faults. And then we need to go to God and confess the sin that we have done. Because remember, the, where do people, where do children get the government? Where do they see the love? It's within the home, it starts there. So if we as parents, a mom or dad, cursing and swearing and carrying on like that, that is not of God, that should not be within the home, okay? We are looking to be uh, putting our family on the altar, on the altar daily, daily on the altar. But we ourselves need to be there our, ourselves, confessing our sins um, to God. And then not only that, but we need to turn, turn, ask God to come into our hearts and make us a new person. And the only way we can do that is by allowing Jesus to change us from the inside out. Does that make sense? Jesus is the only one that can change any of us. We cannot do it of ourselves. Even to get to the point of coming to our place of repentance, the Holy Spirit bring us to the place of repentance. Okay, so we cannot do anything. So someone's, when someone say, well, I can't do this, I, gotta, I can't come to God because I got to get it together. You, you will never get it together because there's nothing within us, right, that will make us be ready. We got to go and seek the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bring us to repentance. Okay, he guides us into all truth. And when he brings it to us, we need to just move at that moment. Don't wait until I wait till next week, whatever. Move now because we'll never know when our time on earth is, is over. No one knows when their time on earth is done. And when you fall asleep and you are, 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 are laid uh, in the coffin, it is too late. There's no time for repentance. There's no time um, uh, go pay anybody to get you out of anywhere. The, your 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 decision has been sealed. Once we once we are are dead, our decisions is sealed. So my sister, my brother, as we're getting as uh, today's preparation day, as we're getting ready uh, for the Sabbath hours right here, it's about maybe eight twenty uh, p.m. As we're getting ready and preparing our hearts to come into the Sabbath hours, make us be, be very aware that we need to follow the Lamb. What is missing in each one of our lives, in the country, in the state, wherever, is the love of Jesus, is the love of Jesus. We just need to continue to follow Him. Look to Him. He has all the answers. We have no answers. Can you imagine? We have no answers. The only answer is come from God. The only true uh, person that can heal our brokenness is Jesus, right? Jesus. Let me drink some water and then I'll go on and say that I have something else. Okay. This says, if you but trust in God to guide you, if you but trust in God to guide you, it goes like this. If you but trust in God to guide you and place 
your confidence in him, you will find him always there beside you to give you hope and strength within. For those who trust God's changeless love, build on the rock that will not move. What gain is there in futile weeping, in helpless and anger and distress? If you are in his care and keeping, in sorrows will he love you less? For he who took, let me go back, for he who took for your, for you a cross, for he who took for you a cross will bring you safe through every loss. In patient trust awaiting his leisure in cheerful hopes with heart content to take whatever your father's pleasure and all this and let me see and all deserting love shall send doubt not yours in mo in most ways are known let me go back doubt not your in most wants are known to him who choose you for his own sing pray and keep his way what did i say sing pray and keep his way unwavering offer your service faithfully and trust his word though undeserving you will find his promise true to be you will find his promise true to be god never will forsake in need god will never forsake in need the soul that trusts in him indeed the soul that trusts in him indeed and this is if you but trust in god to guide you and this is my prayer we just need to trust in God to guide us in everything. Everything we do, we need to have God guide us. So let's close with prayer. The kind of gracious my Father, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, that we can just trust, Father, that we can follow the Lamb wherever He leads us, Father. That is our prayer, Father. Continue to be with us today, Father, as we go through the Sabbath hours, Father. Give us a, a great day as, as we continue to serve Thee, Father. Guide us, protect us, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. So my brother, my sister, have a super awesome uh, weekend. And my brothers, have a happy Father's Day. Enjoy, whether you're with your children or not. Still continue to pray for them and knowing that one day soon, Jesus, your Heavenly Father, will come to take you home. Until that great day, my sister, my brother, until Monday, we should uh, go back and talk about part two of the father's responsibility until then have a super awesome weekend take care